Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Now in this one, we're going to be taking a look at how to make machines using GUI procedures and tile entities. So what I've made right here, I've made an Ardanium dust and I've also made a crusher. So we are going to, using this crusher, we're going to be able to crush the Ardanium ingots into Ardanium dust. And these are just basic blocks. Um, in my very first uh, episode of this series, I showed you how to make these. The Ardanium dust is just, it does literally nothing. It doesn't have a recipe or anything. It's just this Ardanium dust. And the crusher is just a block with three different textures. One for the left, right, and back, and one for the top and bottom, and one for the front. So those are just basic blocks. You should already know how to make those. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually make the crusher work. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually make a GUI for the crusher. So we're going to press add and we're going to come over to GUI here. Let's call this crusher GUI. And let's create a new GUI. And this is what we have here. So this is like a little preview of our UI here. You can change a lot of stuff here. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to the GUI properties up here and we can change GUI with or without slots. And with slots is going to give us our inventory slots and our hotbar, which we want in this case because it's like a machine and we want to be able to put stuff in from our inventory. We could also disable that uh, if you want to, you know, make something that doesn't use items. But in this case, we're using our items, so we're going to enable the slots here. The width and height, I mean, it just controls the width and the height. If you go any smaller than this, then when you save it and open it back up again or load Minecraft, it seems to get reset to this size which is a bit disappointing, but you can make it bigger if you'd like. Again, this is just the default size, so I'm going to keep it this way. Then we also have render background layer. You can see this will just disable the background altogether. Um, in the preview, it doesn't show the slots, but in the game, I'm pretty sure it still does show the slots. But again, we're going to keep this on. And then also pause the game while open. This doesn't apply to stuff like crafting tables and chests or furnaces, so we're going to not check this, but something like the pause menu, for example, does pause the game when it's open. And obviously this won't pause the game if you're on a server, right? Okay, one more thing we're going to check. We're going to come down to this editor options and snap components on the grid. If we check this, we get a little grid where we can put our elements and it just makes it line up better. So we're going to turn that on. We can also change the offset X and Y of the grid. I'm just going to keep it like this. So these elements over here, this is where we actually add in our elements. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to add a text. This one's text. This one's a button. This one's an image. This one is a text input. So you can like type things. This one's an input slot and an output slot. And an input slot is, for example, the first two slots on a furnace, like the item and the coal. So those are input slots because you can put items in and take them out. And the output slots is like the output slot of the furnace where you can only take items out, but then you can't put items back in. But the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to add a text label which is going to be the name of our block. We're going to change the text to say crusher and we can keep our color. And then this is another procedure thing, which will only, you know, show the thing, only show the text if this is true, but we always want to show this text. So we're just going to press okay. And now we get this thing where we can move our cursor around and we can place the text wherever we like. So I'm going to put it in the top left right here. The font stinks in the editor, but again, in game, it'll just be a normal Minecraft font. So don't worry about that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our input slots. So we'll just add an input slot. This is a bit more crazy, but we're going to keep the color as well. We are going to set the slot ID. We're just going to keep this at zero, but you can also change the slot IDs. Uh, the different slot IDs will reference them later in our procedures when we're actually, when we're actually making the crusher work. That's when we'll be using the IDs, but right now it doesn't really matter. We can also limit the stack input. And this basically means that you can only put a certain item and you can pick any item. You can only put that certain item within the slot. And then we can disable player interaction, which just makes it like a display. So we can't take an item or insert, but we're going to turn that off because we obviously want to be able to do that. And then drop items when GUI not bound to any external inventory is closed. That's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> but this basically means that if you put items in there and then someone else comes and breaks the block and then you close the UI, it'll drop the items. So we're going to keep that. And then we, can then we also have these three procedures here, which we'll also be using later. Or we won't be using these later, but yeah, let's just press save. 
and we can place this slot as well. I'm going to put this right here. Or let's put it right here. That looks cool. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an output slot. Slot ID is 1. And then we have all the same settings. So we'll just place this one right over here. Now right in the middle, we're going to add a button. And this is just going to say crush. And voila, it's a little big. We'll move our, uh, there we go. We'll move our slots over. And now we have our UI all done. So we can put items in. And when we press crush, it'll crush them, and we get the output. Okay, so we're going to save the mod element, and we have the crusher GUI. Now let's make it actually work when we open the block. So if we come into the crusher here, and we go to tile entity, we need to enable a tile entity. And this basically is going to let us store items inside of the block. If you don't want to store items, and you just want it to be like settings, for example, if we were going to make like, I don't know, some kind of block that would let us change the time of day, then you don't need this and what you can do is you can come to triggers and you can just do on block right clicked and make a new procedure which we'll go over later to open the GUI. But for now we're just going to come to tile entity, enable it, and we're going to bind the crusher GUI to this block. And we're going to check open and bound GUI and right click and that means when we right click on the block it'll open the GUI. Size of inventory, this is important so that it actually knows you know how many slots we're working with here. So in our GUI we have two slots, right? So we can just put in two. And then max stack size as well, 64. Drop items from inventory when block destroyed. That just means that when we destroy the block, it's actually going to drop the stuff that's in the inventory, which we definitely want to do. And comparator data so that you can actually get like how many items are in the UI or the GUI when you put a comparator on it. We can also disable taking and disable inserting from slots. But we don't need to disable inserting on this slot because it's already an output slot. Okay, next, uh, we can just save the mod element. And yeah, I'm going to open up the game and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are in our world that we've set up. We're going to open our inventory and I'm going to grab the crusher block right here. Let's plop it down. And now if we right click on it, we get our GUI, as you can see. Right now, when we press crush, it doesn't do anything, obviously, because we haven't set up anything. But notice we'll be able to put stuff into this slot, but not this slot. I'm clicking. I don't know if you can hear me clicking, but I'm not able to put stuff into the output slot. But I can put it in the input slot. So now our next step is we're going to make this crush button actually turn the Ardenium ingots into dust. Okay, so to do that, we're going to need to do procedures. Now procedures are kind of the closest thing you're going to get to coding in mCreator. And it's making kind of a script that tells the game what to do more than just these blocks. So it is programming, but it's just blocks, dragging them into the right order. It's pretty easy. So we're going to come over to add here, and we're going to do a procedure. And we're going to do uh, crusher crush. And I like to prefix it with the name of whatever block I'm making the procedure for. So we have crusher crush. I mean, you could just call it crush, but you know. Let's create it. And this is what we have. This is our procedure editor. You can click and drag to pan around. Okay, so this block right here is like the start of our script. This is kind of what's going to execute everything else. And over here, we have all the different blocks that we can use. So if we click on a category, you can see all the blocks in the category. And there's a ton of blocks here, but you can also search them. So it's not going to get too complicated here. But what I like to do first, before I start scripting, is I like to think about what I actually want this to do at like its base level. Okay, but before we actually get started at all, we're gonna save it and actually add it to our GUI. So if we hit save, and we come over to our GUI, click on the crush button, just double click it to open up this editor again, and on button clicked, crush or crush. Save changes, there we go. Now if we come into this button, once again, you can see these little grayed out things here. And this is kind of the dependencies that we have access to, and there's certain dependencies that you can use depending on what you're doing. So in this case, we have X, Y, Z, world, entity, and GUI state. And different blocks will require different things. For example, if we're trying to access the currently open GUI of a certain entity, well, then we'll need the entity component. So it's like referencing the entity. And again, it might seem complicated, but what that means is when we come into, uh, when we come into our script here, and the required dependencies over here, depending on what you make, That'll fill up with the different dependencies we need. And you have to make sure that when we come into here, those dependencies 
actually match these dependencies right here. And if there's any that aren't on this list, then it will not work with this kind of event. So we need to make sure we're only using the X, Y, Z world entity and GUI state. So first, what I wanted to do is I want to check if the output slot is full, because if the output slot is full, we don't want to be actually crushing the stuff because it'd just be crushing it into nothingness. So we, we have to make sure that the output slot has room for more stuff. Then we have to make sure that the item in our input slot is actually an Ardanium ingot. And if it is an Ardanium ingot and the output slot is not full, then we need to remove one Ardanium ingot from the stack of Ardanium ingots and add one Ardanium ingot or Ardanium dust into the output slot. And that's it. So this is actually pretty simple to do. What we need to do is we're going to first get an if block. And this is going to check a certain thing. So we're going to do under slot and GUI procedures, get number of items. And we're going to put slot one because that's the output slot. And we're going to make sure this does not equal 64 for us to continue. So now if we do logic, there's a bunch of different equals blocks. And the equals blocks, they kind of depend on what color you're using. So in this case, this is a purple one. And this is because this is a number. So if we do, we're going to get the purple equals block here and put it in here. So if the number of items, and then you can click on here, and there's a bunch of different things. So we're going to do not equals. So if it's not equal to, and then we go math, and we can get this number block here. So if it's not equal to 64, that means that it's obviously anything but 64. So that's, that means the slot is not full. We'll drag this in here. And this basically, it's checking if this is not 64, and if it is it's running the code that we put inside this block. Otherwise, it's not running it. So we're going to do another check. And then we're going to check if, under slot and GUI procedures, if get item from slot zero. And that's going to just return the item. And this one's red because red stuff is items, right? We come over to logic and we do equals. So if the item from slot zero equals, and then we'll go Minecraft components and grab this red little item block. And this... We can select an item in here. So if it equals Ardanium ingot. So this means if the item in this slot is an Ardanium ingot, then we can continue crushing the item. So we've done these two checks. Now we're going to come over and we are going to go to item. We're going to come over to slot and GUI procedures. And we're going to do remove one item from slot zero. So this basically this is just going to get rid of, you know, an item from that slot. So if we have 64 in that slot, now we're going to have 63. And once again, we're targeting slot zero. So we're removing an Ardanium ingot. And now we are going to set one Ardanium dust in slot one. But the issue with this is we're always setting one. So if we're crushing a lot of ingots, we'll have to always take them out or they're going to keep getting destroyed, right? Because it's setting it to one all the time. So we need to actually, since there's no add one item block as far as I know, we need to get the number of items from the slot then add one to that. So, you know, complicated. But we're going to come over to slot and GUI procedures and get number of items from slot zero. And then we can do math. And here's a plus block. So we can do that plus one. So if there's 63 items in that slot, and it's going to be slot one, then it's going to give us 64. So we'll just delete this one in here and drag it right on it. And that's actually our entire script. So running through this one more time, just if you're new to programming, but if you are already experienced in programming, this is super easy for you to understand. But so we're checking for the amount of items in slot number one, which is the output slot. And if it's not 64, that means the slot is not full. Then we continue to check if the item in this left slot, so our input slot, is an Ardanium ingot. Then get rid of one Ardanium ingot and add one Ardanium dust in this slot. And that's it. So we're going to save the mod element. And also if we check over here at required dependencies, you can see entity and it requires entity because we're always accessing the currently open GUI of the event slash target entity. And if we come over here, you can see we have the entity. So we're all good. Just save this. We're going to save both of these. And now we're going to open up Minecraft. Okay, so here we are in our world once again with our crusher. We open this up, press crush, nothing's happening because we don't have any items in there. So if we put in one item, hit crush, 
it turned it into an Ardanium Dust. And if we put in a stack, it's going to keep on turning it into Ardanium Dust. Now if I click this a bunch of times, now the slot is full. If we put in our item now, it's not crushing because obviously the slot is full. So we can't get any more. But as soon as we take it out, we can now crush again. And there we go. We can get ourselves some useless Ardanium Dust to shower ourselves in for, for some reason. I'm not sure why you would want to, but... You know, it exists. We can get our Danium Dust. And yeah, I don't know why I'm Steve, but thanks a lot for watching, everyone. And next time, we're going to hopefully take a look at Entities. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Bye.